After his bar mitzvah and complete conversion to a Jew, Frank and Ed decide to leave the church to head out into the city hoping to make a painting big enough to make all the people aware. The painting that will bring about hope. In one of the tapes, John Smith watches as in an alternate reality. He enjoys a great day with his family. He and his son enjoy a meal and some cola as they watch Martin Luther King deliver a speech on freedom. Smith watches this with tears in his eyes remembering his late son. Later as he looks at the family photos on his office desk, he is notified about Juliana and Liam. Apparently, the CCTV footage had captured them, entering the German Empire through one of the borders. They had killed four German soldiers in the process. Smith immediately recognizes Juliana and tells the officer to increase the security in the city. He wanted to take them alive. Smith then receives a call from the trade minister of the Japanese Empire, Tagomi. Tagomi tells Smith that he wanted to discuss the oil sanctions that the German Empire was imposing on the Japanese for the past couple of months now. He tells Smith that Wexler who the German Empire had assassinated through Joe, had given them the file on Die Nebenwald, the same machine that the Germans were building to travel to an alternate dimension. When Smith hears of this, he goes silent and then calmly tells the trade minister that he will get back to him in a while. Smith goes to the Führer Himmler immediately and tells him of what had happened in the call. Himmler is frustrated that the Japanese knew of their projects and tells Smith that he must go to the meeting and find out what exactly they know about the project. Despite Smith not wanting to leave his family alone, he is forced to prepare for his journey to the neutral zone. Himmler also commands Smith to find the whereabouts of the man in the high castle when he is in the neutral zone. Meanwhile Frank and Ed reach Denver, and they plan to make a massive mural painting on the biggest billboard there. As they head to their respective hotels, Ed meets up with Jack. Jack tells him about Baku, the person who had found all of their items from the day they had been robbed by the bandits. He also tells Ed about Childen, who had apparently sounded concerned when he had called Jack. Ed immediately calls Childen believing that he wanted to know about the lost stuff, but Childen instead warns them that someone was coming to look for them and tells Ed to leave Denver with Frank immediately. Ed however doesn't take the warning too seriously. The next day, a huge crowd had gathered to watch the billboard sign that Frank and Ed had created the other day. Witnessing the grandness of the whole thing and the response from the crowd, Frank, Ed, and Jack are impressed. However, just then they are surrounded by some Japanese Yakuza, and before they know it Kaido had arrived there. Ed is pelted to the floor while Frank is taken captive once again by the Japanese Empire. Juliana and Liam on the other hand, reach the secret hideout of Liam's rebel friends. Immediately Juliana meets up with his friends and realizes that she had seen one of them in her visions. The man, Chuck, was an excellent sharpshooter just as she had seen in her dreams. Juliana shows all of them the tape that she had brought with her, where the Allies had actually won the war against the Germans. Unlike the church, the tape here gets a really good response with everyone cheering and clapping at the possibility of a better world. After showing them the video, Juliana tells them that the Germans were making a machine to travel realities and conquer all of them. At this, however, opinions are divided. Some think that they need to stop the Germans while others believe that it's not their fight to go and die just to save the other realities. Liam comes in and calms them all down. He tells them that they will help Juliana no matter what they believed in. Chuck also agrees with Liam and suggests that they could blow the whole place up. Juliana explains that the machine is being built in a mine in the Poconos. They decide to go to a guy from the resistance in New York who could help them enter the mines with relative ease. At the Smith household, Helen is worried that once Smith leaves, their daughters would be subjected to physical tests and perhaps found to be sick, the same as Thomas. Smith assures her that he had pushed the dates of the examination so when he was gone they would have no issues whatsoever. He then heads to the neutral zone with his men and they start scouring each and every barn and farm in search for the man in the high castle. However, they have little success and the most they can find are the houses abandoned by a Benson and his wife. Later that night, Tagomi meets up with Smith in the location they had predetermined. Smith is a bit indifferent at first but when Tagomi tells him that he was the one who had given Kaido the tape that saved the world from the war that Martin Huesman had almost started, Smith loosens up. Tagomi then tells him that he wanted the peace between the German and Japanese Empire to stand for centuries to come and therefore he requests for the sanctions on the oil trade to be lifted. In exchange, the Japanese Empire was ready to give back all the defectors who were living as refugees in the empire. With that offer on the table, he leaves, giving time for Smith to discuss the deal with his superiors. After his meeting with the trade minister, Smith's men finally track down the location of a Benson. They find his wife there who manages to kill several of their officers but is eventually captured after being shot in her back. A Benson later returns to see that he was surrounded. Immediately he puts a gun to his neck to end it all, 
but Smith blackmails him with the life of his wife, and so Abenson complies with their demands. Smith then calls Himmler to inform him of his success. Defura is extremely pleased and tells Smith to return back with his prisoners at once to the mines in Pocono's. Juliana and her new group of friends meet their contact who shows them a different mine through which they could go to the mine, where the Nazi project was located. The group enter the mine and spy on what exactly was going on there. Himmler and Smith are in the mines as the Project Die Nebenwald's first testing begins. The researchers strap on some volunteers to a converter belt, and they are forcefully taken into the machine. Slowly as the machine rumbles the power starts cutting off, until it goes off completely. When the power comes back on, the conveyor belt refuses to come back and so the researcher himself heads to check the results. Three of the four volunteers had actually turned into smushy goo and a pile of blood while one of them was nowhere to be seen. Proud and ecstatic of the results, the researcher announces to Himmler that one of the soldiers had made it through, concluding the experiment a partial success. Himmler is ecstatic as well but just then, they realize that someone was watching this whole thing from the other mine. Juliana and her friend's cover was blown. Soon the German soldiers surround them and a gunfight begins. A grenade is thrown at them and the explosion brings down a lot of rubble. Liam and some others manage to escape but Juliana falls down unconscious, and is captured by the Germans. Elsewhere, Kaido takes Frank to a quiet location over the sea, and the two talk about how fate had bound their paths together. Kaido acknowledges that what Frank had done was justified, and he would have done the same if someone murdered his family, but he also claims that it was his duty to do so. Frank is calm and accepts his fate claiming that he was no longer scared of death. He then bows down and prays to the Jewish gods as Kaido takes out his katana and severs the man's head off his body killing him. Back at the Smith household, despite Smith telling Helen that no one would come for an exam, a nurse shows up. The nurse tells Helen that the exam was scheduled for today, and proceeds to bring Smith's eldest daughter out for an exam. However, just before she could begin Helen jolts up and tells the woman to get out of her house. She then grabs her two daughters and immediately marches out of the house, and heads to the beach house of one of their family friends. Smith on the other hand, how now got both of the most important criminals in the entire world in his captivity. He watches as a Benson and Juliana sit in their cells wondering what they can do next. Smith then goes to interrogate Juliana who has suffered from some minor injuries during the explosion. Smith commends Juliana for having the guts to kill Joe, whom she liked so fondly. However, Juliana replies that once Joe had been brainwashed by the Reich there was nothing in him that she liked. Smith questions her further but Juliana is stern and doesn't reply so he gets up to leave. As he heads to the door, Juliana reveals how Thomas had been on the few days before he had died. She tells him that Thomas regretted being born the way he was but now that she sees Smith she thinks that Thomas was wrong to have thought so highly of his father. Liam on the other hand goes to visit one of his friends Richie who is an old resistance member. Liam plans to do something grand and needs Richie's help who is quite big in running mobs and crews inside of New York. He tells Richie that on the day of the Jarl Null inauguration, he will need to start a rally on the streets. Richie reluctantly agrees. The Jar Null celebration finally begins with the German Empire adamant about destroying every bit of American history from the entire world. As Himmler, Smith, and all Nazi officials gather on a yacht and witness the destruction of the Statue of Liberty, a huge parade of people starts protesting on the streets. Himmler gives a rousing speech about how Jar Null would create a new beginning for the Americans and the German Empire in itself when he is notified of the commotion on the streets. Smith assigns his men to go and take care of everything even though Himmler thinks that it's just the people gearing up for a new age ahead. Himmler and Smith then head out to the city to access the situation. As they walk into the street unprotected by their guards, a shot suddenly fires from somewhere, and Himmler is shot in the chest. The others quickly take cover but Himmler is gravely injured. The shot was actually fired by Chuck on the orders of Liam. They had done the biggest job in the history of this world, shot the Fura. Thinking Himmler is dead, Liam and Chuck escape however, Himmler is dragged away alive to the hospital. Smith tries to call his wife to see if she was okay but Helen tells him that she was okay and didn't want to see him. He had become something that she could no longer face. Troubled by everything Smith then goes to a Benson to know more about the travelers and alternate reality. The man in the high castle tells him that their machine would fail as no one who was still alive in both realities could travel. There needed to be space in the other reality for them so that they could go there. Moreover, they didn't even need a machine to travel and it was just a huge waste of their money. Just then the lights start to flicker and the objects start to move on their own. On the other cell, Juliana is meditating and trying to travel to the other reality. Smith quickly goes to her cell and pulls out a gun to shoot her but just as his bullet strikes her, she vanishes in thin air. Juliana had traveled to the other reality. 
Subscribe and hit that like button to help our channel grow. Turn on the notifications so you won't miss any of our new videos. Thanks for watching.